We want to welcome you to our service this morning. It is our prayer that you will have an encounter with God that will change your life forever. Isn't that awesome? God is good, isn't he? Uh, we want to, the bulletin is full of announcements, so if you've got it, keep it and read them all. I'm just going to hit the ones that are coming like right around the corner, not that they're any more important than any of the other ones. They're just right here upon us. So we want to remember uh, there'll be home prayer meeting at Sister Barbara Jean Willard's uh, this Tuesday, the 23rd at 10 a.m. Also, uh, the discipleship class is going on in the uh, conference room from now until May 3rd. Um, so if you'd like to take part in that, it starts at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, come out and be a part of that. Uh, we will have a family movie night, January 26th. Uh, here at the church, they'll be watching Joseph, King of Dreams. The doors will open at 6.30, and the movie begins at 6.45. There will be concessions. And also, we certainly want to keep this one in prayer. Our, our middle school and high school students will be headed to Greenville Church of God for the Unite Student Rally on Saturday, January 27th. Uh, if your kid wants to attend, the church will be leaving in the church van at 6.15 from the church here, and we'll be returning at 10.15, and we want to keep that in prayer. God can really touch the kids in an atmosphere like that will be there at that rally. Also, the homeless care packages are, are um, going on. The drive is going on. The list of items needed is in your bulletin, so look over those, and if uh, you feel so inclined, grab a few and bring them to the church. The church will make sure they get to where they need to be. Um, we will have choir practice today at 530, and also Sister Ellen would like to extend an invitation if you would like to join the choir. Please, uh, you can talk to her or Brother Gary, and uh, they will get you what, they need, what you need to do to join. Um, grief Share will begin February the 6th. Uh, there will be a community benefit gospel singing. That's going to be for Zach Martin on Saturday, February the 10th, beginning at 6 p.m. here at the church. Um, Dawson Ro Road and His Redeemed will be singing and a love offering will be received so please make plans to to be a part of that there'll also be a silent auction at this singing uh, the ladies ministry will be selling peanut butter hearts for Valentine fundraiser so beginning next week if you would uh, sign up in the there will be a sign up sheet in the foyer so you sign up your name and how many hearts that you want and the Young at Heart is going to be in Kenley on Thursday, February 15th at 10 a.m. If you plan to attend, please sign up in the foyer. The deadline is February the 4th. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've come expecting to encounter his presence, to fall under his word, and to fall in line with his word. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my feet out there first to be stepped on, brother. You bring forth the word. You don't let anything stop you from bringing forth what God has said to this body. For we are here for such a time as this. I believe that 100% that we are 
are here for such a time as this to affect this community, to affect, to affect our families and our extended families, our prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. We have that power. We have the name of Jesus to speak over our families and speak over this body and community. So when we go in prayer this morning, go knowing that God is already in control and he is already orchestrating your answer, hallelujah, according to his word. Um, so we want to lift up these needs. We want to lift up Brother Alex Langley in our prayers. Continue to lift him up. Sister Amy Boyd says, remember and pray for Michelle Waters. Their whole household is sick, so we want to put a covering over them and pray for them. Also, Sister Amy says, remember for her son, Naren. He goes on Tuesday to a, plain, a pain clinic for injections in his back. So we want to lift him up in our prayers this morning and continue to see God move and minister. Um, Sister Nellie says, remember Judy Bryant in the nursing home. She has cancer and needs our prayer. Hallelujah. Let's lift her up this morning. And Sister Jessica Elk says, remember June Kilby and the family. Um, this is um, Allery's grandmother and um, Sister Stacy's mother. Um, they've called in hospice. She does have terminal cancer. So we just pray that the Lord will intervene in that situation and show us, show them comfort um, and just give them strength in this situation. So we lift, the, we lift up each one of these this morning in faith, you know, just uh, pray God's word. And I just want to extend a thank you to everyone who came and participated in the 24-hour service, and I'm sure to Pastor Will as well. But it's just such a, an encounter with God when you dedicate your time and your effort, and you make that sacrifice, you will walk right into his presence. And that's what I want us to do this morning. Give us that, give him that sacrifice of praise and action adoration and worship and come into his presence this morning to let him change us and to let him guide us. Amen. Are there any unspoken prayer requests that we want to lift our hands to represent this morning? Praise the Lord. We're going to go into the um, presence of the Lord in prayer. Praise Amen. Stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. Let's pray this morning expecting God to do something. I believe God is going to work miracles here today. Hallelujah. I don't say that just flippantly. I don't. I believe God's going to work miracles today. So if you need a miracle today, you're in the right place. I'm telling you, this church has been praying, fasting. We're in day 20 right now. And I'm telling you, God is going to honor that. Hallelujah. God, we come before you today. We thank you, God, for every blessing of life that you've given to us. God, we praise you for this church, for this people. God, we praise you. Dear God, for Calvary, we praise you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, that has washed our sins away. God, that has reconciled us back to you, the Father. And dear God, we just praise you, God, for the opportunity to come into your house this day and worship you. Oh God, we call out these requests today to you. Dear God, people that need a touch of heaven in their life. Dear God, we just pray that heaven will invade Alley Good Church of God this morning. Dear God, that our hearts will be uplifted and strengthened. Dear God, those that are weak will be made strong. Oh dear God, we just pray, Father. Dear God, that those that are in need of salvation, dear God, will find it today, Father, in an old-fashioned altar of prayer. Dear God, I pray, oh, Father, that the, uh, ho the Holy Ghost will just manipulate and convict hearts this morning. Dear God, convict us all, Father. God, will be drawn closer to you. Oh, God, we just pray for every need, every hand raised, Father. God, you know each and every need, the urgence of each one. And dear God, we're just trusting and believing in you, Father. Oh, God, the miracle-working God, the God that healeth all our diseases. Dear God, we praise you for your blessings. We love you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Please remain standing. Let's sing.
And Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus in the streets and Jesus, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, do it again. Believe it this morning. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in. Over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong.
out Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus your name is power your name is healing your Bless the name of Jesus in this house this morning. Amen. You know, the Lord said, if I be lifted up, he said, I draw all men. Amen. We're here today to lift up the beautiful, the holy, and the wonderful name of Jesus. You know, every time in that song when it says, I speak Jesus over my family, I, I take that so personal. Amen. Because of every lost loved one that's represented by us here tonight, today we, we represent a, a number of people that are lost would you just take just a moment and we're, this is day 21 of, of finishing up our 21 days of prayer and fasting as she continues to play, play that would you bow your heads and let us pray for the lost and the prodigals and those in our families father right now in the wonderful name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we speak Jesus over our loved ones Lord their situations Lord they're just some that are just unconcerned this morning. There, there are others that are steeped and they're deep in sin, bound by addictions, bound in so many different ways. Lord, there may be some that are alcoholics, drug addicts, Lord. There might be some, Lord, that have uh, they're atheistic in their belief. But, Lord, we speak the name of Jesus. We cry out to you today, Lord, and on this 21 day, this 21st day of 21 days of prayer and fasting, Lord, hear our prayer in this auditorium this morning. God, move, Lord, upon these prodigals, upon these lost loved ones. We're, we're praying and we're believing and we're trusting this morning. And everybody said amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Amen. This morning is my assignment at this time to get ready to lift up the offering. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How many of you are glad to be in the Lord's house this morning? Amen. I'm so thankful for the opportunity, and I want to reiterate on what Sister Jennifer said. We Today concludes our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, starting on Friday night through Saturday night, we had 24 hours of continuous prayer in this house, in this building, and people were coming all times of the day and night, folks that were signed up, others that didn't sign up but came anyway, and we just approach the throne room of God and for the last 21 days I, I'm not sure how many came I didn't keep a record but I think we had people show up every single day during the 21 days a number of people have been fasting you say brother Bateman that just sounds so radical amen it is and that's what we want to do we want to be radical for the Lord Jesus Christ here so I'm going to pray that we're just going to see the fruits of the labor and believe in God for great and mighty things. Amen. Brother Kenny said, we still serve a miracle work in God. Amen. That moves on our behalf. So we are pray that lives have been touched, bodies have been healed, people have been convicted, and, and the saints of God have been drawn closer to the things of God. Amen. 
Come on and say amen. I want to mention real quickly again, it was mentioned in the announcements, we're having the gospel benefit uh, sing on February, I believe it's the 10th, uh, for Zach Martin. He's a state highway patrolman. He's got a uh, cancer and he's battling. He's been at Duke for about a couple of weeks and he's come home, uh, I believe, yesterday or the day before, and we're excited for them. He's able to be back home. He has two small children. And uh, these are the two groups we'll have. It's a community event. It's just, we're hosting it, and we want you to be here that night, uh, February 10th at 6 p.m. Come out, support, bring people with you. We, are we going to lift an offering up? You better believe it. You know, you come to church, we're going to take an offering up. Amen? And we, But we're not going to keep any of the money. We're going to hand it right off to the Zach Martin family. We, we want to be a blessing to them. Uh, Brother Kenneth Hardy is uh, heading this up, and he's out and about almost every day. Uh, getting community support, sponsorships, items being donated uh, for our silent auction. And so if you're here today and you've got a new item uh, that you want to uh, bring, a basket like we did the last time when the ladies' ministries had it, put together a basket uh, and bring it and donate it and whatever that sells uh, for or is uh, auctioned off at, that all the proceeds, every dime will go to them. Amen. Isn't that a great idea? Isn't that a, isn't that a great opportunity to, to bless the community, to I mean, for the community to bless this family, amen. So, uh, and not only that, but I can tell you, I've been talking to him, and I've been talking to that spark fire of a, a wife that he, that he has, and she is believing God for a miracle. And I want you to agree, more than the money, more than the community support, more than the gospel saying, you can do something above all of that. You can bombard heaven and say, God of heaven, God of miracles, in the name of Jesus, touch Zach Martin. Come on, right, let's pray together. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we cry out to you today on behalf of Jenny, the boys, and Zach Martin. We believe in you, God, and we're standing on the promises of God. Touch that young man. Heal that body. Raise him up in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, amen. Amen. You say, Brother Bateman, you're in a praying mood. Yes, I am. Amen. I got all you good people of God that know how to get a hold of God. So I figure it'd be pretty smart if we all pray at the same time for the same thing. Amen. amen. I better hush or I, we'll, we'll miss the offering. All right? Would you stand? We're going to ask you to do this. Get out of your seats. Bring your tithe. Everybody real quickly. Amen. Tithe is 10% of what yeah, you can give more, but the Bible speaks of. People say, well, I don't know about all that. You preachers, all you talk about is money. Look, God don't need your money. God don't need. Look, she's so, she's so ready to go. She's bringing it all ready. Thank you, honey. I'm that excited. I wish everybody was that excited about giving to the work of the Lord. God don't need our money. He's looking for your obedience. I don't talk about money much I, I, because I'm so embarrassed of all the foolishness on television. People saying, send $1,000, send $10,000, and they're flying around in million-dollar jets, living in million-dollar homes, making a mockery, making merchandise of the gospel. I promise you that's not going to happen here. What we believe, that we tithe, I've been tithing for 32 years, I'll tithe till I die. As long as I got money coming, I'm going to bring it to the work of the Lord. I don't regret a dime or a penny that I give to the work of the Lord. Come on, somebody, help me. I don't regret a penny of it. Amen. It's been, God's been good to you. He's been good to me. Let's bless the work of the Lord. You give it to the work of the Lord. We bless missionaries all over the world. We bless local missions here Coastal Pregnancy Center, different ones we've helped out, amen. We're helping out in the, with the homeless outreach. We, we do good things. We want to reach people. We want to be a blessing, amen. So I just encourage you, if you've got questions about giving or tithing or any of those things, set up an appointment with me, amen. I'm flexible. I'll meet with you. We'll talk about it. Let the Lord touch your heart, amen. Uh, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Father, Heavenly Father, we, we've come to this time, Lord, and that is to bring our offerings, our tithe, our givings, Lord. The Bible speaks of the alms, that is gifts that, that go reach and help the poor, Lord. You know what goes on here at Alley Good Church of God. We get calls. We've had them for, for decades. People in the community reaching out in the need, and Alley Good has responded, helping pay in different things in emergency situations, Lord God. And, Lord, the tithe and the offerings and the missions, Lord, we've reached around the world. This country church out here 
in the middle of nowhere has reached around the world and impacted lives, God. So, Lord, we just take another opportunity to present our tithe offerings and givings to you, the Lord, and we give you praise for all that you've done. And if you've been blessed and you love the Lord, would you say amen? Step out of your seats and let's give to the work of the Lord. Amen.
Amen, amen. Now it's your turn to sing to the Lord this morning. If you'll stand today. We're going to sing a chorus that's very familiar. You know, and I think sometimes when we get together and we sing and we sing some of the same songs over and over and over, if we're not careful, we forget what we're really singing about. And may we never, ever forget the power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we think we have to pray some long-winded 5,000-word prayer to get, a, get through to God. But if we could only remember the power in the name of Jesus and remember who He is and that nothing will ever change that. He's our King and our Lord today. He's our Savior today. And He sits on His throne wanting to hear His people worship Him and acknowledge Him. There is something about the name of Jesus. If you don't know everything there is to know about Him, sometimes all you have to do is whisper His name. Let's sing to Him this morning. Acknowledge Him today. There's something about the name of Jesus. Amen? Let's worship together. and bless the Lord in his house this morning. Amen. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. Me and you will come and go, but one thing's for sure, amen. There will always be 
of Jesus. Amen. Would you remain standing for the reading of the word today? Thank all of y'all so much this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning with the 11th verse. I want to share a principle, a couple of principles out of the word of God this morning. I thank you for your worship. I believe the Lord wants to do a deep work here today. I believe God wants to do a deep work in our lives. Amen. You know, you say, well, you're the preacher. It doesn't matter. Preachers, elders, teachers, saints of God. If it's the first time you've ever been, it doesn't matter. God wants to do a work in us. God wants to do a work in us. God wants to touch you. You thought you were just going to come today and go through the motion. No, God, God the Creator wants to transform and touch us today. I believe that with every fiber of my being. I'm going to read this morning. God speaking here through the pen of the writer of the Scriptures. He hath made everything beautiful in His time. Also, he have set the world. Now, I want to stop here, and this is really not a, the best translation of this word here. This word actually in its original meaning, God's set eternity in their heart, that no man could find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I'll help try to unravel some of this, unpack some of this. But the way what God is saying in this principle, God has placed eternity in our hearts every one of us did you hear God has placed eternity in our hearts let's bow our heads Father from the youngest here the age of understanding we bless our young people in the children's church this morning thank you for what is being taking place Lord for our teenagers and young people here this morning to the oldest gray head here you've placed eternity in our hearts Lord there's there's this sense, there's this longing for something beyond what is here. Lord, you've laid this strongly on my heart this last couple of weeks. And so, Lord, I, I'm going to deliver what I believe you've given me. So now, Lord, we've prayed, we've asked, we've fasted, we've sought. We pray today, Lord, now that you will minister your word to the hearer. Let us have an ear to hear what the Spirit has said. God, anoint and touch and help and strengthen me to deliver this word this morning for this time. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you as you're seated. It is a privilege and an honor to be in the Lord's house. You know, last night we we, we were... Uh, we, we tried to stay up all night Friday night, but I'm telling you, I'm just too old for that stuff anymore, amen. So I, I had to uh, give it up. I do appreciate those that uh, ministered and stayed, and a uh, number of people were here a long time. I appreciate Brother Scott uh, helping so much to, to navigate and keep things going throughout the night, and I appreciate all of you. Uh, we, we had to get up yesterday and head out about 10 o'clock and go uh, uh, to, a, to a funeral. I had to do a funeral in Henderson uh, yesterday, and so we were, it was a very long day, and I felt the effects of it when I got home. I realized that uh, it's amazing when you're young what you can get away with. When you get older, what catches up with you? Would you say amen there? So I want to preach for a little while, and I, and I want to I want to, I want to title it if, if I would or if I could. So it's in view of eternity or in light of eternity. Because every one of us here, we need to wake up. Young people, listen to me. This, I really believe that God's going to speak to some young people in this building today. That God wants you to know that there is a purpose. Now, when I say young, let's go ahead and clarify so y'all old folks don't get mad. Can we say 40 and under? If you're over 40, no, I'm not going to say 50. You tried. 40, 40 and under. If you're over that, you're not old, but you're just not young anymore. And I believe that the Lord wants to speak to everybody, but I believe I've had a burden this week that God's going to touch and going to speak to some younger people. Maybe I'll even go, we'll go 50, 50 and under. Listen, you have purpose, you have destiny, you have a calling, and this is what this message is about. And us older folks, we get it too. It's for us too. But I want, God has impressed so heavily upon my heart this past week that God's going to speak to people here. You are searching 
You are, you, you are empty, you are void, you're, you're trying to reach out and you're trying to search out and you're trying to find your place, uh, your meaning to be here. And man, what a great opportunity to hear the Word of God, for God to speak to you today and say, I've got you on my mind. That God wants to speak directly to you and God wants to touch you and God wants to open your eyes and God wants to use you and God wants to unveil his plan for your life. I don't know about you, amen, but I've been serving God a little over 32 years and it's a wonderful plan and the retirement benefits are out of this world. You know, you're, you may be laying up for the 60s and the 70s and so that you can retire. And, 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 and yes, and that's a wonderful thing to do, amen. But I'm laying up my treasures also in heaven, amen. I'm looking beyond the veil that I see on this earth, amen. And there is more to life than just going through this. So many people are disillusioned. So many people are, are, are depressed and discouraged and trying to find make some sense of what is going on. And God says, I'm speaking to you from eternity past to your present and to your future that God wants to move. God wants to do something in our lives. That's a great place to say amen. God, you know, eternity is a long time. I did a funeral yesterday. I mentioned earlier she was 91 years old. She played the piano at our church we pastored before Sister Kim took it over. She had to leave and the, the uh, working at the church because her husband had dementia. I, I went up there last year and, and did his funeral. And we were at a little uh, small Pentecostal church out in the country, Pentecostal Holiness Church out in the country and, and outside of Henderson in between Lewisburg and that area. And as I pulled up in there, I preached there before year, many years ago and had been to revivals there from, from other people and knew the knew the knew the people there and and as I was talking to the granddaughter she told me that her grandmother who was 90 who passed who was 91 years old was a small child in that church and I believe that church is close to a hundred or over a uh, uh, hundred years old and that she had served in that church and had worked in that church and had lived in lived in the neighborhood and went there about 40 years and then spent the last 30 40 years of her life uh, at the Warrington Church of God serving in capacity but in 91 years now for us of oh, those of us that are uh, nowhere near that age that seems like a mighty long time, but in the scope of eternity, it is a drop in the bucket. 91 years, man, I hope I get to live 91 years. and Boy, that's a long life and a full life, and, but in the light of eternity, simply a drop in the bucket. My, my hope and my prayer before this sermon is over that you'll hear me. God's speaking to people, and he's preparing his people for eternity. Do you hear me? I, I I want you to I want to be clear and you know as 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 much you know I've been fasting and praying and and you know anytime you fast those of you that fast you know what I'm talking about man when you deny yourself of food that you I don't know but I get ill. What do you mean I can't eat today? Well, I'm fasting. I'm trying to get close to God. I'm trying to hear from God. And, 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 and so, you know, and when, when a preacher fasts and prays, he can't wait to get to the pulpit because, man, he wants to kick his feet up and he wants to, he wants to shout and worship. And, man, I want to preach. But I want you to hear me this morning. God's preparing you for eternity, either in heaven or you're going to reject him. And there's a hell. God is placing, God put eternity in your heart that there is a divine sense of purpose inside of each and every one of us. There's more to life than what we see here. Oh, God, please get a hold. I'm, I, I have such a burden for you young people, you 40 and under this morning. Hear this old preacher. Listen to me talk to you this morning. God is preparing you. He has divine purpose. God's want, God's, you're, you're not aimless. You're not, they're, they're, you're not just a blob of, and you, you're just not born, and then you just live aimlessly through this life, and there's nothing Past this life, I was having a great conversation during the prayer time, and one of the uh, men I was talking with, we were talking about along these lines, and a lot of times we are, even as Christians, 
we sometimes our faith is tested. And this Miss Man said, Well, you know, sometimes I wonder just for a half a second, when I close my eyes in death for the for, close my eyes for the last time in death, is there anything beyond this life? But he said, I know that there is. And there are times in in in, in my walk with God, I'll have a momentary lapse of faith. Can I be transparent? Moment, when I mean momentary, I mean one thousandth of a second. Just, just that boom. And sometimes this thought will come to me is all that we do here, the preaching, the living for the Lord, the serving God, the Word of God, uh, the, 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 this life of faith, is it real for a, for a millisecond? But in a moment, of, uh, in, in just as equally fast of a time, in a moment, in a span of time, I know that God is real. I know that God has placed this divine sense of purpose inside of me. Amen. There is life beyond this life. There is life beyond the veil. God is real tonight. Amen. You hear this morning, God, listen to me, people of God. There is a God. There is an eternity this morning. And God has put eternity in your heart. There is this, there is this we, we like to call it like a void, a longing, a sense of purpose. It, anybody ever wondered, ever had that journey we call, what is the meaning of life? Anybody? Ray, help me. I, I, I did. As a young man leaving the church in organized religion and being brought up in Pentecost and, 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 and knowing about the Lord as, as I ventured out in the world, I, I didn't know that that was real, but there was, a, there was something in me that what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose? And, and I searched, and you, y'all ain't going to help me, but I'll preach anyway. I tried different things and I experimented and, and, and I, I tasted success of, of things and I've tasted the pleasures of this world and I sought this and sought that and I come to the conclusion nothing that I'm searching for under the sun can satisfy me. There's nothing I can do. It's, it's not going to be found in, 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 in a relationship. It's not going to be found in, in financial uh, uh, stability, even in an overflow of money. I know some of you say, boy, if I could just get that promotion, if I could have more money than I know what to do with, I'm telling you, you can try to, you can have all these things that you think are important, and they just don't feel the void. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You say, Brother Bateman, I'm not going into detail, but I tried it. I, 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 had, a, I had a business as a young man and, and made more money than you could almost spend. And I thought, well, and I remember sitting there and, 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 look, and looking in, at the bank accounts and knowing that the money that I had, and, and I was miserable. You say, Yo, well, I would love to try that. <laughs> it ain't going to feel it. It won't do it. You can, you can have all the fame, you can have all the fortune, you can have all the relationships, you can have everything that this world has to offer. But you forgot something. God put eternity in your heart. And I'm telling you this morning, as sure as I'm standing here holding this microphone and everybody, you better listen to me. God set eternity in your heart. You can push it away. You can deny it. You can live your life any way that you want to live and live it uh, to the dictates of the flesh. Or you can yield this morning and say, there's a God in heaven. He knows me by name. He has purpose in my life. Amen. He wants me to serve him. Amen. And I'm telling you, amen, that hole, that void, that law. Longing, that sense of no, I want to know what, what life is about. I can tell you what life is about, amen, and that is to glorify the God of heaven, the creator of the universe. That's to live him, obey him, serve him, and worship him. Woo! You're crazy. No, I'm not. I'm just in love with a man called Jesus. I serve him. I, I You know, this... This morning, I last night when, when the last person left, and I came in here and finally run Brother Scott off and t- go home, go to bed, son. I came down here in this altar a little after seven. 
I said, praise God, 24 hours of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. These people are crazy. No, we're not crazy. we got to be eternity in our hearts. We're praying this year. You pray with me. You agree with me. You stand with me. You declare the word of God. You speak the name of Jesus. Over our, we've declared this the year of the prodigal. The year of renewal, the year of restoration, the year of revival. And we pray we've added one more to it. Brother, you're putting it on us. I'm, we're praying a heavy burden for lost people. I think really that's probably maybe the most important one that we're going to be praying. The prodigals and a burden for lost people. Because you know why? Because eternity hangs in the balance. I remember, and I've shared this, and maybe this will help some of you younger people because if I see you, if I see any of you, anybody in here under 40 years old, if I see you, I'm a, if, anywhere in the community, if I see you, if I, give, if I get your telephone number, I'm going to call you. I'm going to, eternity. God, y'all, y'all help me please this morning. Somebody. Would, would witness to me. And I thought, man, here, you know, I ran from God. I don't, I, I'm not proud of it. I ran from God. I was searching for something. As a young, as a 12-year-old boy, I knew that there was something that God wanted me to do. I didn't understand it. 12 years old, I wanted, I knew something. But, you know, when you're 12 years old, your voice is changing. Your, your hormones are raging. Acne's popping up on my face. I'm crazy about girls. I want to, I'm interested in sports. And all of these things are going on, in, but in my mind, there, there, I know that there is something that God wants me to do, but I, I don't understand it. You know why I had this thought? Because God put it in me. And it doesn't have to be, a, yours doesn't have to be a call to preach. I didn't understand it. I, I went out and, I, you know, I had an experience with God as a, as a young teenager. Well, pushed it aside and went on and lived my life. Oh, but let me tell you something. When I cried out to God a little over 32 years ago on that uh, January the 16th, 1992, about 1030 uh, in the morning, amen, and I cried out and God wondrously reached down and saved me and touched me, amen. The first thing I thought after I praised God for salvation is this is what I have been looking for all my life. I'm fulfilled. That That hole is gone, that sense of not knowing, amen, what I'm supposed to do. That sense of not understanding why I'm on the earth. Hear me today, God created you for eternity. God created you to worship Him. God created you to serve Him, amen. And I promise you today, if you'll get right with God, if you're not today, amen, God's getting ready to take you on the ride of a lifetime. Somebody praise Him. what I'm preaching say man it's not about it's not about how great a life you're going to have here you know we 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 Pentecostals we get spoiled a little bit we y'all uh, to Tonight, I want you to come. I want to bring you shouting shoes tonight, okay? Bring them. Some of you say, well, I ain't coming back tonight. Well, you're going to miss it, all right? We get, we, get a little, we get a little spoiled, I guess, or a little accustomed. We, we, we want to feel God and experience God. I, woo, I do too. I want to shout, sing, dance, praise, worship, cry. I do. Every service, I do. I'm going to tell you. But it's more than just about our feeling this morning. It's more about than just your life, what's going on. Look, this is more important than your family. Look, now we family around here. Some of us, now you know what, come on here. 
I remember I pastored a group of people. I won't tell you the name. They won't hear. And it was years ago. And they was a dysfunctional family. Y'all know any of them? They were dysfunctional. Man. I, I, I'd done funerals for them, weddings for them. I didn't know if they was going to fight, pull guns, knives. I'm serious. Boy, that liked the man, and you know, but I, what, I, what, I learned, what I learned about them is that if you crawl, if you want in that family, you cross one of them, you got all of them. Then. They might not like each other, but if you cross them, they're going to come get you. Now, a lot of us here, we, we, we love our families. I love mine. Woo, I'm going to be transparent. You mess with my family, you're going to get hurt. You say, but that's, that's ugly for a preacher to say, I'm just. You come over here and put your hands on my wife, Brother Bateman going to kill you. They worried to death they was up. I got a bodyguard, buddy, back here. You ain't going to get nowhere close to her. Come on, somebody. I love my family. It's not about my family. It's not about your family. All this, God understands we have that need. You love your children, your babies, your grandbabies. This is about eternity, people. This is about, it's not about what we feel today, and I love to feel it, and I hope we feel it. I have felt him. It's not about that today. It's not about what, it, what it's about is eternity. It transcends what we feel, what we believe, how we see the world. There is an eternity to face. So when you leave here, your blood won't be on my hands. Young people. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? The Bible said if I don't warn you, when I stand before God, I'll have your blood on my hands. It's serious. It's eternity, y'all. So, so when I stand before the Lord, I, I, I'm going to give an account for what I've done. I, I, one preacher said uh, five minutes in, into eternity, we'll, 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 we'll begin to weep because we'll, we, we could have done more for God. We should have done. No, I'm not worried about that. When I stand before God, I... I want my hands to be clean. And when you leave this building, you, you've been, there, there's eternity for you. Listen to me, young folks, old folks, and everybody in between. You're going to stand before the true and the living God. God, this, there's, this, there's this preaching now that everybody's saved and you just need to find out about it. No, that's not how it works. There's this preaching is that you can live any, you know, when you accept Christ, you can live any kind of way. Look, when you live with eternity in light, in view, it changes the way you look at your life. It's teaching everybody saved and the greasy grace, and you just, you know, and you use the grace of God to, to live any way. No, no, no. Live in light that one day you'll stand before God. And here I am preaching to you and to, to this congregation. I can tell you this has been a heavy burden. It's not what I wanted to preach this morning. Are you kidding? After 21 days of prayer and fasting, Want to run the top of the pews. God sent me by here this morning. I don't have blood on my hands. You, you've heard me. You may never come back again. I hope everybody comes back every Sunday. Well, you leave here, you've heard this. You'll stand before et you're going to live somewhere in eternity. How do I know this? Because God's placed eternity in our hearts. I want to obey God, not man. I don't want nobody to lie to me. I don't want nobody to tell me. Amen. I've had people tell me, when you die, that's it. No, it's not. I've had people, I've read behind other preachers, everybody, you go to heaven. No, you don't. We're, we're inundated with Facebook and, and social media, and people are, it, it, they're, they're so easy to, to just include everybody in the family of God. We need men and women of God who will stand behind the pulpit, flat-footed and tell people the truth. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Eternity hangs in the very balance this morning. It's not what you accomplish. I, I know it's, I'm, I've got to, I'm not hurrying, but I'm, I am. It's not what you accomplish. Well, look, we all... We all want to, we all have dreams. And I, I want to see my children do better and live better and maybe hopefully 
have a better life than I did. I, there's nothing wrong with that. We want to accomplish things, but it's not about what we accomplish here. That doesn't mean, people, you could be the hardest worker here. And I commend that. The Bible said, of dispose, the Bible says, a man don't work, he don't eat. Our government don't believe that. That's why we're in the mess we are. And, 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 and there's, there's a lot to be said for people that are motivated and hard workers. And, 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 and go-getters, I've, I've been that. I've been in the business world. I'm reminded of a time when, when I was working for this man, and he brought all of his salespeople in, and, and I had one salesman of the month a few times and one salesman of the year the year before. You know, I was motivated, and I was a go-getter, and, and, and he had us in the office, and evidently sales weren't that great, and he was trying to motivate us. And we all after the meeting, we sat down, and then a customer come on the parking lot. So the moment that the customer comes on the parking lot, you would have thought all of us salespeople would have jumped up, but he was the first one to get up. He said, y'all sit there if you want to. But what he didn't know, the moment he got up, I got up behind him. He walked out that door, I was right behind him. He began to walk down the steps. I was a lot younger then. I grabbed a hold of the, of the porch railing and went over that thing. Woo! Hit the parking lot running, looked back at him, and he was still on the steps. I'm just a smiling. Hard work, hard work and perseverance and all of these things are, a, are important. We're not talking about uh, laying around and not doing anything. We're, we, we commend hard work, but let me tell you something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about preparing yourself for eternity. It's not how much you accomplish, how much you have in the bank. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Elon Musk, I don't know the rest of them. Some of these men are worth 50, 60, 70 billion dollars. I can't count that high. It won't help them in eternity. See, I, I know that's more money than most of us can even comprehend, I'm sure. I, somebody here today, you, you're... you're, you're in this building, somebody here is at the top. you got more money than the rest of us. I can tell you right now, it ain't me. And somebody here has got less money than the rest of us. And the rest of us are all here in between me. Let me tell you something. It won't matter on that day. It will not matter on that day. Just, Ellen, if you can make your way back and we'll, we'll try to close this out. God's speaking to some people. I want, I want, my, I want people to start breathing prayers underneath your breath and in your spirit I want you to start praying God's speaking to people God's speaking to people this morning you hear me there's this empty somebody here today more than one I believe you're empty you can't figure it out you just there's got to be more to life than what I'm experiencing and that's good because there is. And you don't understand. Maybe some, even there may be Christians here today. You, you, you got saved, but you, 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 you went after, you've gone after everything. It may, maybe you're even chasing a feeling. Maybe you're chasing an emotional charge. But nothing, God's, nothing that your chase, your after, can fill that void the way that God, God placed a divine purpose in your life. I want you to stand. I'm going to stop. I got so much more, but I'm going to stop. I want you to bow your heads. The last of this verse, see, he's, he's made everything beautiful in his time. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to please listen to me. Please, please. Saints, help me pray. I wrote here, you have to understand that God has ordained your time and your season here. I thought about eternity yesterday. When I preached that funeral, that 91-year-old saint of God, last few years of her life her husband's been gone well they've been separated anyway because they were in different rooms in the nursing home he had dementia 
His mind was gone. His, hers was slipping. Her granddaughter told me that every day she said, her husband, Lewis, he said, he's coming to get me. But he's already been dead, but he's coming to get me. Their season came to an end. I got a call this week, dear friends, dear, dear friends from Virginia. Pastored them, love them. Husband called. They've been battling cancer. She has successfully for a while. Had a setback. He called me, his voice trembling, exhausted. The hospital in Richmond. We're taking her home to die. We pastored these people for years, both of them. Wonderful, wonderful saints of God. Loved God, loved the church, loved us, we loved them. Hard workers, faithful servants of God, hard workers in the church great supporters physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially just I couldn't ask for better members we were all inspired especially by her dedication and you have a fundraiser oh my goodness that woman worked tirelessly it was a beautiful thing the Bible says here God has made everything beautiful in its time. There's some beautiful saints of God in this building. Some of you have been serving God longer than some of us have even been alive. What a beautiful thing that God has done. He's appointed all these things for their season and their time. I've enjoyed 30 plus years of ministry and I hope the Lord will give me a little bit more. And I tell you, it's been, there's been some uh, bad stuff. There's been some, some ugly times. But I can testify to you today that God, it's been a beautiful thing. Seeing souls saved, lives touched, building relationships with people, seeing ministry take place impacting ministries through giving and praying and connecting with missionaries throughout the world and just on and on and on. I remember one time I got a call. I'm closing. Got a call in the middle of the night, two or three o'clock in the morning. It was a, a wayward preacher's son who'd been backslidden from God, and running from God for 40 years. And he called me. I had witnessed to him over the phone. I'd God had worked it out miraculously. I got his telephone number and I called him and talked to him about the Lord. He didn't want to hear it. Weeks, months, whatever it was later, he called two or three o'clock in the morning. He wanted to talk to me. And he gave his heart to the Lord. I think he was in his maybe his 40s. Ran from God. Listen, he told he got saved that night and he told me that if God hadn't have saved him that night. He, he had taken money. Hear me. He had taken money from some gang members down in Louisiana, Baton Rouge, or New Orleans to go kill somebody. He had taken money. He was hired. He let somebody hire him to go kill somebody else. But God intervened. That's a beautiful thing. And now he's lead pastor, overseer down there and working for the Lord. God's made everything beautiful in its time. But when its time is up, mine, yours. Young people today, don't let nobody fool you. There's a God. There's, a, there's His Son, Jesus, who died on the cross. There's a relationship with Him, a life with Him, a beautiful, wonderful season that God wants to use you. You were created for eternity. I better hush. All heads are bowed and all eyes are closed. We're going to do it.
this way this morning. We're all going to come before we leave. It's still early. Don't nobody panic. There's somebody here today. You know God spoke to you. Maybe you don't understand everything I said, all the words, the terminology I use. That's okay. You know there's a hole. There's a void. There's a longing in you. And you want to make it right with God. I wish you'd step out. We, when you can come when we all do. What really would bless me and bless the rest of us here, and I know it blessed the Lord. You'd step out right now. And say, I want purpose. I want to experience that destiny. I want to experience that relationship with the Lord this morning. Would there be one? Pray, saints. Somebody say this morning, I've, I've known God is real, but I really never took that big step or yielded. And I want that peace with God this morning. I want that, that joy that only the Lord can bring, that, that perfect peace, that peace that's missing this morning. That go, I've got a void. I didn't say, you're good people. You're a good man. You're a good woman. You're a good dad, a good husband, and a good father. Good worker. Young lady or woman today, you're, you're, you're a good mom and you're a good wife. You're a good person. You're a hard worker. But there's just something missing. I want, you, I want God to speak to your heart today that God's placed it. What you're feeling is this eternity in your heart coupled with the convicting power of the Holy Ghost of God. Letting you know God has deposited this divine unction in you, this divine sense. My life means something. I have purpose. I have destiny. I'm created to serve you. I'm cre I exist to serve you. This morning, I, I want the people of God to rally around this altar for a season. Come on and step out of here. Step out of your out of your pews. Now, I understand everybody's not comfortable coming. Everybody may not be able to come. I want you to begin to start praying with eternity in mind. Come on, let's fill these altars. Eternity. Pray. You're not going to come to these altars. Pray. Put your hands on your wife, your, your daughter, your son, your grandchildren. Let's pray together. Eternity is at stake this morning. Today we may stand as the body of belief. We may stand in the gap this morning between life and death, hell or heaven. God, you're doing the work here this morning. Lord, you're moving in a mighty way. You're directing our paths. Lord, just let everything work out for the good this morning, God, for this beautiful family. We look unto Jesus, the Bible says, who is the author and the finisher of our faith.